Well, Kingdom, greetings and God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Women in Ministry TV broadcast live YouTube channel. And I am Prophetess Dr. Gwendolyn Bradley, and I'm so honored that you would take time out of your busy schedule and join me on tonight or whenever you're viewing, maybe you're viewing the replay. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking this time out to be with me. And I also want to give honor to the visionary of this platform, uh, Evangelist Jacqueline Battle. It was her vision for Women in Ministry TV, live YouTube channel. And we're also on many other social media networks. So what a blessing it is to be in this season where we can have the gospel to go forth unhindered, unhindered, to go forth into the nations. Because this is a time and a season where the harvest is getting ready to come forth. And the Lord wants all of his people to be on assignment and to be ready to open up our mouth in this decade of pay, be open to share the gospel with those that the Lord will place in our path. And if you have a platform such as this platform right here that I'm sharing with uh, many women that go forth on this channel, this is the Fresh Fire broadcast uh, for the Women in Ministry TV. And I thank God. Listen, we are in a season where we're swiftly running towards Resurrection Day. And, you know, I uh, love to every year I encourage the people uh, that come in my path to prepare their hearts. Prepare your hearts to uh, remember and reflect upon the great sacrifice that Jesus paid for each one of us so that we can have life and we can have it more abundantly because of the blood of Jesus that he shed. Uh, we are free. We are free. We are free from sin. We can be delivered. We can be healed. We can be set free in the name of Jesus. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next few broadcasts leading up to Resurrection Sunday. You know, whenever you sit up under the word of God, something powerful happens. When you sit up under the word of God, what begins to happen is that word that was preached. If you're preaching, if you're sitting up on the word, uh, preaching about joy, uh, I believe that you receive an impartation of joy. If you are uh, under the word and the teaching is about deliverance and healing, I believe that you can receive that, that impartation for healing and, and deliverance. So we, during this season, Let's begin to reflect and to look at what the word of God has to say about the blood of Jesus. That's powerful right there. Even to mention that, oh, it begins to uh, just bring uh, so much, so much victory in my spirit just to say the power of the blood of Jesus. So that's what we will be focusing on for the next few Tuesdays or whenever you're viewing this broadcast that you join, we will be talking about that and teaching about that and seeing what the word of God has to say about that. So I'm going to read some scriptures to you. And um, also after we read these scriptures, I want to pray over you that if you have never taken time out leading up the resurrection Sunday uh, to uh, ask the Holy spirit to cleanse your heart, to, uh, prepare you to receive the fullness of what the Lord has done for you on the cross by his sacrifice, his blood sacrifice, that you would understand that this, this time, that you would get that revelation this time. So let's read some scriptures here. I'll first be coming from Isaiah 1 and 18. It says, through your sins or though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. They shall be as wool. Also, um, I'd like to read 1 Peter 1 and 18. And it says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold, from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood, 
as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for those that have joined on tonight. And Father, I pray that you will touch their minds and touch their hearts. And Father, open up our eyes and give us new revelations, Lord, that we have not received in your word what you have done for us, Lord. By your sacrifice on the cross, God, I thank you for sending your only begotten son into the world to die for each one of us. And I thank you, oh God, that this is the season in the time, Lord, that you are ushering in a great harvest. And I pray that salvation would go forth over the nations and over these airways and through the social media platforms that men and women would come to you saying, what must I do to be saved? And I thank you, Lord, that you have given us a mouth and all we need to do is open up our heart and confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that you, Lord Jesus, have died on the cross for our sins and you rose from the dead on the third day. And we receive that on this day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the blood of Jesus. I was talking about how powerful the blood, the power of the blood is. And that's what I want you to, to get during these next couple of weeks. You know, uh, the, the blood of Jesus is our power source for our salvation and our freedom. Uh, the moment we receive Jesus Christ into our hearts and our lives, we are forgiven for our sins. I'll say that again. The moment you receive Christ into your heart, you are forgiven. You know, the Lord becomes your Jehovah Sikkenu, which is our righteousness. And he becomes our Jehovah Mekadesh, which is our sanctifier. And sanctification is a process. So there's some of you right now that's listening to this broadcast. You have been going through guilt and shame because the enemy keep passing, keep reminding you of your past. And the word of God says that when Jesus went to the cross, he died for your past sin, your current sins, and your future sins. And as we walk in forgiveness, as we ask the Lord to sanctify us, as we ask the Lord to purify our hearts, we are forgiven. Jesus has already gone to the cross for that. He, does, he will not go to the cross again. It was a one-time sacrifice. We're not in the Old Testament where those sacrifices are made daily by the priest. But once and for all, Jesus went to the cross, spotless, the spotless lamb, and he died for each one of us. And you know what? There were seven places, seven places that Jesus shed his blood. And I want you to get the meaning of this, because you need to receive. Some of you are going to be delivered during this broadcast. And as we uh, move forward in the next couple of weeks, because the enemy has been holding something on you. And when you see the, all the places that Jesus shed his blood and all what all that means for your life, I believe that something new, something that's going to be a shift to take place in your thinking, in your mind, because you know that's where warfare takes place in your mind. And when I look at, when I think about those seven places, let me, let me share with you Leviticus 16, verse 14 and 19. Before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times, cleanse it and consecrate it. So we know that the Old Testament still is revealing Jesus. Even though it's the Old Testament, we know that Jesus came to earth. He emptied himself, according to Philippians. He emptied himself of all of his glory. And he came down here to earth to be acquainted with our ways. And he came down to die for each one of our sins. And that, you know, John, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believing in him shall be saved. Oh my, that's a powerful scripture. 
that is a powerful scripture right there. But we see in the Old Testament when the priests would go in and they would make the sacrifices, that they would sprinkle the blood seven times. You know, seven is the number of completion. And as they sprinkle the blood seven times, what it was pointing to, the seven times, the seven places where Jesus would shed his blood for the completion of our salvation. He purchased our salvation. And you know, when one of his last words on the cross, he said, it is finished. So I want you to know that your salvation has already been purchased. Your deliverance has already been purchased. Your breakthrough has already been purchased. So today I would like to uh, share with you the first place where Jesus shed his blood uh, for us. And when we, I want you to look at this. You know, there is a place that we learn in the Bible that's called Gethsemane. Amen. I might not be pronouncing that correctly, but Gethsemane. Uh, this was uh, a place. It was a garden where Jesus prayed the prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. I want to share with you that prayer right now. And I want you to, in your free time, I want you to study this particular prayer. You can find it. One of the places you can find it is in Luke 22, uh, verses 39 to 44. And the reason why I chose Luke is because Luke was a physician. And you know how doctors, they carefully document uh, your case, your cases of infirmity, your cases of sickness. And if Luke recorded this and thought that it was important that we would know this, I think that we need to take another look at this as we are talking about the first place where Jesus shed his blood. And when you think about blood, one of the things that you think about is a doctor. Get to a doctor. Amen. So Dr. Luke shares with us in Luke 22, verses 39 to 46. And I'm going to read that. And it says, Jesus went out as usual, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Wow, here we have a picture. Jesus is about to go to the cross. Something that is going to bring great suffering and he does not dare go into this without yielding himself to the father and submitting to prayer that's why it's hard for you right now we're trying to do everything else to solve our difficulty except pray but in order for you to get a breakthrough in order for you to get deliverance, you must remember the ministry of prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer changes everything. It doesn't just change some things. Prayer changes everything. And when you pray in the midst of your difficulty, what you will find is that the Lord will pour out great strength upon you right there in the midst of that difficulty. So here we have that he knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, being in anguish. He prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Wow. It was so heavy on him that he's prayed sweats of blood. And there is a condition. I know that there is a condition. It's, it's already been notated uh, among physicians that there is a condition where you will, where you're under great stress and strain and that you are, you will sweat drops of blood. And here we see that this was 
the first place that Jesus shed his blood. It is important that you know this because why? Because the word of God in Hosea 4 and 6, it said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So as we look at, as we're going to be looking at the significance of those seven places that Jesus shed his blood. And here he's in the garden of Gethsemane. Now, I have been to this garden in Israel, and it is known as the place of the olive press. And you know, when we have olive oil, olive oils, olive oil is made from olives. And in order to make olive oil, you must press that olive. Let me tell you what, in order for the anointing to come forth in your life, I don't care what your assignment is, you need an assignment, you need an anointing to go forth in that assignment. Knowledge is great, but knowledge without the anointing is just knowledge. You need the anointing and you need knowledge. So Sometimes when you want the anointing or the anointing is present, when you see the glory on a person's life, when you see the anointing on a person's life, you must know that there is a story behind that glory. I said there is a story behind that, that glory and the pressing, it is doing the pressing, it is doing the trials, it is doing the tribulations. It is during the suffering where we see the anointing begins to increase on our life. And here Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross, to be crucified on the cross. And he stops here in the garden of Gethsemane, the garden, the grove, the olive grove. And there is a pressing forth. There is a pressing. There is a pressure that is upon him in the oil that in the anointing for him to go to the cross, oh my, oh my, it was going to take and going to require that squeezing. He was squeezed during that time, the pressure that was on him, the sins of the world as he was going to be nailed to the cross. And he began to sweat drops of blood. Each place he shed his blood was for a specific purpose, to reverse the curse and bring blessings into our lives. So we need clear knowledge of this, understanding of this. It's the first step in overcoming the enemy's stronghold in your life, in my life, in everyone's life. So we must learn how to apply the blood of Jesus to our lives because we know that it is through the blood of Jesus that we are set free. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, as Jesus had withdrawn from the disciples, you remember, you know, he told them, why don't you go over there and pray? And of course, when he came back, he came back, he found them sleeping. He said, could you not pray for me for at least an hour? If Jesus can pray during a time that he is about to go through the greatest suffering of his life here on earth, fully God, but also fully man, then surely we can take at least an hour a day to enter into prayer. Oh my, I just said something there. We need to make prayer a priority in our life. And I know some of you saying, I do pray. I pray every day. I pray before I eat my food. I pray before I go to sleep at night. I pray while I'm on my way to work. But you need a set-aside place. You need a garden. Just like this garden of Gethsemane, this place of the pressing, the olive grove, where the anointing was pressed out. You need a certain place in your home where you can go and you can get breakthrough, you can get deliverance, 
You can pray. You can pray before you begin your day. You can pray before you end your night. You can pray at any time. You need a certain place in a garden because it's in that garden. When you spend time in that garden or that set aside place for prayer, that you begin to press out your destiny. You begin to press out your purpose by way of prayer. So it was on during this time as Jesus was in the garden that he could have decided not to go to the cross, but he did not. Even though he was fully God, but he was fully man, he did not let fear overtake him. And that's some of you right now. The enemy is holding you. He's holding you with the spirit of fear and you cannot move forward. But I want to let you know it was in the garden of Gethsemane that Jesus overcame. He overcame the spirit of fear. He could have decided he was looking at what was ahead of him going to the cross. He could have decided not to go. But in the scripture, it says that when he kneeled down and prayed, he said, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And so that's when he began to sweat those drops of blood and they fell to the ground. The, the significance of the blood falling to the ground in the sweat of blood that Jesus was producing at this hour, it had a threefold purpose. Remember last week we were talking about commanding the month of March. And it had, this is the month of March, the number three. And we know that the three is a very powerful number. The fullness of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So let me tell you three purposes of the Garden of Gethsemane, that prayer in him sweating those drops of blood. Number one, Jesus won back our willpower. You know, it was Eve that sinned when she was deceived by the serpent, according to Genesis 3 one through six and she gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat at verse six eve was the seed but adam chose to sin he rejected the will of god and thereby surrendering his willpower over to the desires of his flesh and so ever since that day man has struggled with his willpower over the flesh so in ourselves, when it comes to a choice, when it comes to a choice between the desires of our flesh and the will of God, our flesh will win every time. Oh my, anybody ever been on a diet? You try to do it with willpower. Well, your flesh, that's why we need to do a lifestyle change because that flesh is going to win out every time. So we are no longer, because of the blood of Jesus, we're no longer subject to the will of our flesh and our sinful desires. Sin over, Jesus overcame the greatest temptation that was so intense, and it caused him to sweat blood. And he set us free to choose the right thing. Right Where you are today is a result of the choices that you make. And you know what some of us say? We remember uh, there was a comedian. His name was uh, Flip Wilson. And he used to say, the devil made me do it. Well, the devil can't make you do anything. You choose to do it. But, you know, you don't have to do it. You can, you can receive what Jesus has done for you on the cross. And you can take back your willpower in the mighty name of Jesus. And another thing that the blood of Jesus we see accomplished here in the garden, we're set free from fear from fear of the will of God. You can now choose the will of God over the flesh. You can now choose, amen. You know what? I want to give you another word with that. Proverbs 28 and one, the wicked flee when no one pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. God wants you to be relentless and go walk with him. Be bold as a lion. 
because as you are bold and as you are courageous, you can accomplish great things in the earth. Don't you let that devil move you off your assignment. Also, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God had not given us a spirit of fear, timidity, but a power and of love and a sound mind. You know, we're coming to a time, many of the states are dropping the mass mandate. And you know what? We're not going to fear. You know, we're going to make our choices. We want to wear our mask, wear our mask. We don't, you know, whatever happens, I don't want you to fear and to know that the Lord has already taken care of this moment. You know, we're, I'm not going to fear. We don't, we don't fear these type of things. And the third reason and the final reason that I'll say the will of God is released because of Jesus choice in the garden. The will of God can be released in your life. It can be released in my life, the lives of our children, the lives of your ministry. So we say, we say at this time that thy kingdom come as we are all becoming men and women of prayer. I want to challenge you to find that garden in your home. Amen. Find your prayer garden. And let that be a place where you regularly seek the Lord and find breakthrough deliverance and know that this first place where Jesus shed his blood in the garden of Gethsemane, it was through prayer, him sweating drops of blood. So we say, Lord, let that kingdom come. Let that will be done on earth, in earthing vessels, in our situations as it is done in heaven. Well, um, this has been awesome. This has been powerful talking about the first place where Jesus shed his blood and also talking about giving you some understanding and revelation in the midst of your situation right now. You're going through a pressing. Yeah, you're going through a pressing. You're going through some hurts. You're going through some challenges, but it's only to press the anointing out. You need the anointing. You cannot fulfill your assignment without the anointing. You cannot understand the word of God without your anointing. So I declare and I decree that you will not get out of the battle. You will stay in because you know there's nothing to fear. You let the will of God be fulfilled in your life. And you know what? The greater your level of suffering, the greater level of glory that's coming on your life. So we give God praise for all that he's doing. Remember, if you want to sow a seed into this word, you can always contact women in ministry you can cash out women in ministry tv and we will receive um you that will help us to continue to further on the gospel to get on these social media networks because the gospel needs to go forth amen so we're going to push it forth so remember you can sow a seed dollar sign women in ministry tv and we will be so much appreciated for uh your contributions that will help us to further the gospel into the nations. Well, you have been listening to Prophetess Dr. Gwendolyn Bradley, and you have joined Fresh Fire today. May fresh fire be released on your life. Become hungry. Become hungry for more of the presence of God. Become hungry to do the will of God. And remember, don't you dare stop praying. Don't you dare stop believing and trusting in God because harvest is getting ready to come forth concerning you. Father, thank you for the, all those that have joined today. We give you praise. We thank you for Women in Ministry TV. We thank you for those that are being touched and moved upon right now, those that are getting back on their assignment and getting back into their prayer gardens. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless you.